With fall approaching and cooler temperatures, now is the time for horses to get a West Nile vaccination. Dr. Lindy Gillum is an equine internal medicine specialist at OSU's Center for Veterinary Health Sciences. She says the threat of West Nile is greater this year. The virus can cause long-term neurological damage in severe cases. Early detection is key. Or oftentimes, West Nile horses will still eat and drink. They don't necessarily go off their feed, so it can be a little bit more difficult to detect. They also don't always have a fever, uh, which horses with some of the other encephalitides will have. So they can be a little bit difficult to detect early on. However, if they are detected early on, um, the prognosis is usually good. They usually respond well to treatment. So you want to get them looked at early and treated early. Uh, if they get down and are unable to get up, the prognosis is much worse unless they're handled in a facility that has a sling you know, that can keep them standing. Horses just don't do well uh, when they lay down for prolonged periods of time. Other signs of West Nile? The horse is more depressed than usual. Fine muscle tremors that may start around the muzzle or triceps area. Head pressing, incoordination, muscle twitching and weakness, blindness, even seizures, or a horse that's down and can't get back up. A simple blood test confirms whether it's West Nile or something else. Another key factor, controlling mosquitoes in the first place. For help, we turn to extension livestock entomologist Justin Talley. Justin, what are some things that horse owners can do to reduce exposure? The number one thing they need to be concerned about is the water sources. That's where mosquitoes are breeding and that's where the mosquitoes are coming from. And there's different types of water sources. There's flood water type mosquitoes, there's permanent water sources, and there's also permanent water sources that are considered transient. As well as we have uh, container mosquitoes. And these are the ones that we see normally around horse barns that have a lot of containers, water troughs that aren't clean, old tires that aren't being dumped out. But as well as we have these permanent transient water mosquitoes that are developing in areas that maybe it's a leaking water trough that is providing some breeding sources because it's not only a water source, but it's dirty water as well and that's where the mosquitoes are breeding. Another thing is, is that when you have weeds or high vegetation around your barns, that attracts more mosquitoes to, to the actual operation. So one thing that they can do is cut down the weeds and then the number one priority is to reduce any standing water around their location. And probably change that water out yes, pretty regularly. Yeah, change it out so it's clean, it's not dirty water. Uh, it's the stagnant dirty water that we see more mosquito development in. Now, you talked about some of those breeding areas and then when people think about control options, there are some differences and some things to think about there as well? Yes ma'am. The number one thing to be concerned with is the difference between repellents versus your actual control products. There are some control products that you can put on your animal and it kills the insect when it lands on the animal or tries to feed on the animal. And there's other types of products that you can put on the animal they are just repellents. They're not going to kill the insect, they're just going to keep the insects away from that animal. And through years of research, there's all kinds of natural products out there that people can use, but what works the best is your good old DEET. Your DEET is that you put on your horses is going to be your, your best product to keep mosquitoes away from feeding, from feeding on your horse. And then also, the things that you need to consider is there's products you can put in water. So if you have a pond, you know, on your operation, on your horse operation. You can put products in that pond that don't, don't affect the fish, they don't affect any other wildlife. All they do is target the mosquito developmental cycle and they prevent them from becoming adults. And it's just either these things called mosquito dunks or granules that you can actually put in the water. Areas you need to concentrate though are around the edges of the water. Not in the, oh, the whole water surface, just along edges, especially around vegetative areas. That's where the mosquitoes are going to be developing in. Okay. Uh, what about the barn itself and some of the options at night to kind of keep the air moving and kind of get the mosquitoes out of there? Yeah. So the types of mosquitoes that are mainly responsible for transmitting West Nile virus to horses feed on horses at night. So one thing we recommend is stabling your horses from dusk to dawn. 
But when you do that, you need to put a fan on them as well, because not only to keep them cool, but it deters any flying insect from landing on that horse and feeding on it. The other thing is, is if you have incandescent light bulbs, don't leave them on at night, because that's what's attracting the mosquitoes into your stable itself. So if you do have incandescent light bulbs, make sure they're at least 50 yards away from any animal that's inside a stall. Okay, and these are actually a little bit different types of mosquitoes than we think about that's biting you and I, right? Yes, ma'am. These are mosquitoes that we don't normally see because they're feeding at night, they're smaller, uh, and they're just their behavioral patterns. We just don't see them on us or around us that often. Now, on horses, it's a different story. The, the, these mosquitoes considered Culex mosquitoes, Culex tarsalis, actually prefer feeding on horses more so than humans and they've been implicated in transmitting West Nile virus. And whereas in, in the human population, we have these larger mosquitoes that we can see feeding on us, like the Asian tiger mosquito, that's this nice big black and white mosquito that as soon as it lands on you, you can see it. These other types of mosquitoes, you can't even hardly see them when they're actually feeding on the animal itself. Okay, Justin Talley, our Extension Livestock Entomologist. Thanks yeah. a lot. Thank you. Thank you.